about one of the most important periodic activities of the Harvard Law School Association, and that is to give the Harvard Law School Association award. This is not like a degree that has to be given every year. We give it when, it, when, the, when the case is so compelling and the need is so obvious that, uh, that, that, that it, it, uh, it almost, I will say, gives itself. The criteria are set forth in the, uh, in the organic document. For those of you who have a program, uh, you have it in front of you. For those of you, my friends in overflow and at some of the tables, uh, let me read them to you. This award honors, on behalf of the entire law school community, sustained or extraordinary service to the legal profession, reflecting the qualities of intellect, integrity, leadership, and responsibility that the Harvard Law School fosters. It recognizes service to society, recognizing a signal contribution to the public welfare that exemplifies the values of Harvard Law School. It recognizes sustained or extraordinary service to Harvard Law School. The first recipient was Erwin Griswold. He received it some 60 years after his graduation. Other recipients include Justice Blackman, who received it some 60 years after his. My arithmetic is not complete on this, but I will tell you that the average recipient seems to have been out of school some number of decades, many more than 50 years before this recognition was earned. I think it says so much about our recipient today that he's here less than 15 years. Do I have that right, Senator? Less than 15 years after his graduation. And distinguishes this list and honors us by allowing us to honor him. You'll hear more about this from the dean later. I recognize that I stand between you and a lot of terrific speakers, not to mention a very tasty lunch. Please come back. Please come back in the spring to our next meeting. Please come back to Harvard often. Please send your friends and colleagues. Encourage that bright high school student to think about law school. When they say, why me, say, why not you? And finally, please join me in extending our most earnest, heartfelt appreciation and thanks to Neil and Sharon, who will never again need last names. They will be Neil and Sharon for their extraordinary efforts in this splendid weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful lunch and a splendid time. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you for your support and thank you for your leadership. Um, may I offer a special welcome to Charles Hamilton Houston III, who is in attendance today, and Dr. Karen Houston, who are the grandchildren of Charles Hamilton Houston, class of 1992. <laughs> Did I say 1992? <laughs> Please correct me if I do that again. <laughs> 1922. Okay, God knows what I'm about to say now. <laughs> Uh, I am pleased to introduce someone I have known for 35 years. Peter Bino has been a leader since the first day I met him, when he was president of AFRO. He dressed a lot differently then. <laughs> the African American Students Association at Harvard College. A graduate of Harvard College and Harvard's JD MBA program, Peter Bino has been a trailblazer and a history maker. Peter is one of those troublesome contemporaries who does a job on your self-esteem. While you struggle to make a mark in one career, Peter's hit the ball out of the park in several careers. He's currently senior partner of the Chicago office of DLA Piper Rednick, a global law firm with over 2,900 attorneys, where he serves on the firm's executive committee and is also chairman of the firm's diversity committee. But Peter's not just an extraordinary attorney. If you've been to a baseball game in Chicago, or Atlanta, or if you attended the Olympics in Atlanta, you've been touched by Peter. Before joining Piper Rudnick, one of Peter's roles was as Executive Director of the Illinois Sports Facilities Authority, which developed and built Comiskey Park for the Chicago White Sox. Later, working as a consultant who helped develop the Olympic Stadium in Atlanta, 
he helped develop the Olympic Stadium in Atlanta, and he helped manage its conversion to a stadium for the Atlanta Braves. In 1989, Peter made history. When as managing general partner, he accomplished the first ever purchase of an NBA basketball franchise by African Americans. When he and his partners bought the Denver Nuggets. Now he later sold his interest, so it's too late to hit him up for tickets. <laughs> Yet Peter has still made time to serve his many communities. The business community, he serves on a number of corporate boards. The community of Chicago, where he serves and chairs a number of cultural and charitable boards. And the Harvard community, where he served on the board of overseers for nine years. And now, to offer some reflections on our honored guest, please welcome one of my first role models, Peter C.B. Bynum. <laughs> 